go. That's a little bit better. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for today's installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby. Today is Friday. That means it's Free Coaching Friday, your opportunity to stump the coach. So, if you have a question, a comment, a topic that you would like for me to address, then by all means, throw it in the comments. Give me something that uh, try, try to stump me. I welcome the challenge. <laughs> so I uh, hope you are doing well on this Friday. Um, it's a little bit after 7, so it means I've uh, been up, I've had my walk, I've done a lot of things already this morning. Hey, listen, <clears throat> if you happen to be listening on uh, your favorite podcast catcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the like, or if you're watching on YouTube, at some point you need to head over to 7minutesinthemorning.com, 7minutesinthemorning.com. In fact, I might even have, yeah, that guy right there. That'll get you to the right place so that you can participate in the comments just like Joe and Keith are doing this morning. And I do appreciate both of you guys being here today. All right, so uh, by all means, if you have a question, and look, even if you're catching the replay, that's fine. Drop a question in there, and I'll be able to, to um, hit it after the fact. So one question that I did get already this morning um, off comment here was, um, I guess the easiest way to ask it is how to know, how do you know if your business is bankable? A little bit of the backstory that goes behind that, you know, if you have, let's say you have a business, you create something and it's, you expect to make $100,000 a year and in your first year, um, you do 300. Well, there's going to be operating costs, ramp up costs associated with that. You are going to bootstrap the whole thing, but now, holy moly, what am I going to do? And now all of a sudden you're trying to pull everything together and get to some lending institution, be it a bank, credit union, non-traditional lender, angel, whatever, even private equity, and nobody will help you because your, I'll say your accounting house is not in order, right? So the, I know because I know the backstory of this particular question, it really is in the form of an admonition. Make sure that the house is in order. And one great way to do that, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, share a book here uh, by my friend Troy Hopkins called The Business Remodel. And while a you know, subtitle there is Transform Your Business to Love It Again or List It, the the point here that Troy's making in the book really is run your business like it's always for sale and then you never have to get it ready for sale or in this case get your accounting house in order so you can get some money right and, and i started to say for your business honestly this, this plays out for your personal financial state also if you always run it like you're trying to sell it or you're, you're always you know you keep your personal financial situation in a state where you don't need it then when you do you're better uh, better positioned there are always caveats to that always things to consider but that's the uh, that's the big answer there all right so yeah so Keith had a good question about uh, that's interesting Keith that you asked that question that uh, our president, Donald Trump, suggests six-month company reporting rather than three. Um, I'm assuming your question there is, is that good or bad? Okay, I got an answer. <laughs> you almost stumped me, but not quite. So, good or bad for whom, right? So, a lot of I've always, not always, but for the last 30 years, been um, very interested in having a business person as president. Now, you have to take a step back from this for a second and, and look at the big picture here. 
right? Business, commerce, drives our economy. It drives any economy. And even if you don't use money, right? Even if the even if the currency exchanged is not uh, not you know paper folding money or electronic bits and bytes and it can be chickens and goats, the rules here still apply. Commerce drives the economy. The strength of the economy dictates the strength of the community. So if you look at any community <clears throat> that is suffering, any community that's in decline, any community that is not doing well, their economy is weak. The, maybe not non-existent, but definitely weak and definitely, definitely not growing. So what what the business owner, what the business person understands, and this is why I've been very interested in having a business person as president, what they understand is commerce and economics. They've, they've understood it on a micro scale, and when you get to be a business person doing deals, building buildings and whatnot, the size that Donald Trump has done, then you begin to understand economics on a macro scale as well. Right? We can look at our business and think three months or six months, big deal. His projects are six years. His projects span presidencies. Right? So it has to, his view has to extend beyond just the current market conditions. All right. So now, now with that, that part in mind, these types of changes. Who do they benefit? Well, they definitely benefit um, the business owner from the perspective that it removes some of the administrative burden of running the business. And this kind of goes back to the role of government. You're going to get me off and talk in politics, Keith. I, I try to avoid politics. You, you know, is the role of government to protect us from ourselves, right? If if that's the case, then we should then businesses should report every month to make sure they're doing it correctly. And one thing that could happen if you extend the reporting windows, then um, either mistakes of ignorance or mistakes of nefarious uh, basis can occur, and they don't show up as quickly. I'm really more concerned about the mistakes of ignorance. The, the nefarious acts are going to happen whether you report every 30 days or every 30 years. doesn't matter, right? The people, the, the, the businesses that make mistakes, if we want somebody to catch them and, and protect us from making those mistakes, then report more often. But I think the net intent here and the net result yeah, it's okay to talk economics. All right, I can do that. The net result that we want is the stronger economy with less administrative burden. If I have to spend less of my time managing the business, I'll say it that way. If I have to spend less of my time filling out paperwork for a quasi-interested third party, then... That gives me more time to focus on working on the business. And that's going to lead to a stronger business, which can engage in stronger commerce, which creates a stronger economy, which creates a stronger community. So I think the net, and, 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 and I will add that if a business is dependent on the government or some third party agency to make sure that they don't do anything wrong, they're not going to be in business very long anyway. Because the reality is, whether it's three months, six months, a year, even 30 days, you can screw it up pretty bad in 30 days. And if you're not doing the things you need to do to run the business successfully, it's going to fail. So whether somebody is watching you or not, you know, it's kind of like the old saying, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make any noise? Yeah, sure, it makes noise. Nobody there to hear it. And if your business fails, whether somebody's watching you or not, if you're doing the wrong things, it's still going to fall. 
whether anybody's there watching it or not. So think about, and I, I'll try to let me try and put a daily a daily bow on this uh, on this topic, Keith. Now that you got me off talking about this, you know, economics. I, I personally, I believe the two most important topics that we should teach our children are uh, critical thinking, problem solving skills, and economics, because those two things drive everything else. That there is no need for math if we're not solving problems, right? There is no need for uh, for writing if there is no commerce, right? And economics also explains a lot more than just monetary systems and and commerce. It explains, I mean, one whole area of study in economics is called game theory, and you can apply that game theory not just to economics but to life in general, right? So when you are thinking about this little bubble that we all live in, right, our sphere of influence, both outward influence and inward facing influence, take a, take a minute today to look around and think about the effect. Try to pick out the economic effect and the critical thinking effect inside your sphere of influence. Ah, that's a critical thinking problem. Or that's an application for critical thinking. Oh, this is how economics is affecting me, right? Just even if you're just driving down the street, you know, look at the price of gas. You know, what are the economic factors that make this gas station able to sell it for a price that's different than this gas station, right? Or do, do they have better capital backing? Do they have a cheaper source? Do they have less overhead, right? Everything is economics or critical thinking. So just drive around and, and, and look, as I tell you all the time, being aware of something is the number one thing you can do to have an influence, to have, to have some measure of control over how it influences your life. Economics influences every life every day. Every life every day. Millions and millions of people are wandering around oblivious. Right? You have the opportunity to be aware of what's going on around you. And as you become aware of it, turn the knobs and dials that move the needles in your favor. That's all successful people do, right? Just they are, they are aware and they, they make the changes. They expel the effort, expend the effort to take control of their outcomes. All right. Yeah, I agree. Get your own house in order, then help others, then that helps communities. Absolutely. I mean, that is that is the trick, Keith. Amen, brother. We're preaching, preaching the same sermon today. All right, that's going to be it for today and for this week. Thanks so much for joining me all week long. Uh, I, I think I've got a pretty good topic uh, penned out for next week also. I'm going to talk about um, focus and effort. Uh, I've got some, uh, I think I've developed some interesting insights to share with you guys on that. So please be sure and tune in for that next week. I'll be back Monday morning, bright and early 7 a.m. here, Central Time, with another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. You guys, remember, uh, analyze that sphere of influence around you. Look at the, at the critical thinking opportunities and the economic impacts on how you live your daily life. Share that message with somebody else. Share this video with somebody if it's been valuable for you. You have a great weekend. I'll talk to you again on Monday. Take care.